The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tommy O'Brien. Tough shoes to fill, but we'll do our best. We're looking at the Dow futures up 369 at 29,905. Just yesterday, not at this time, maybe an hour and a half earlier than this time, the S&P, the uh, Dow futures were down at 28,635. That's a 1,500 point rally from the low. And what's really important about this, and this is what I was um, mentioning to my subscribers to my opening call for a week now, I've been saying there is so much pressure to the downside that one of the techniques I use is this on balance volume, this little blue line. Yeah, that's using volume. Uh, I don't look at the volume bars, I look at the volume as a cu accumulation of the selling and buying. So, in other words, um, on any chart you're looking at, the bar that concludes, if it is up, you would add that total volume to the running total. And if it was down, you subtract it. It's just the simplest technique that Joe Granville, the late Joe Granville, invented. It used to be so complicated when you had to type in 1 million five or 73 million, 1, 1,640, uh, you know, et cetera, and then add, add it. It was just horrible. Now you just go one line. It's just beautiful. And I, I spoke about it in my, in my video that I did for subscribers on um, Saturday from the overview for the week. I'd mentioned that there was a chance that we could be getting some kind of a trough in the unbalanced volume, which is making a little, trying to make a V-shaped turnaround. It hadn't, of course, done that yet. Now it's done that, and that's an important thing. So that was the one thing. The other is... The speed, we, we were buying the diamonds uh, for a few days uh, going into the low with a 1% risk, a stop of 1% on a 300-something dollar uh, instrument. That is like nothing. It's like an eye blink. And we took a few losses. But look at the gain from the low yesterday to today. Uh, it just, look at, the, look at the way today's futures high. It could turn around, doesn't matter, but it's already done. It's gone right to the 14-period moving average, which it hasn't touched since it broke down on the 13th of September. Look at that. The nine period is the pink because once it crosses negative, that's like a sell uh, signal or a sell mode. And uh, if it goes below the 14 period moving average, it stays pink. If it goes above and to get above, you're going to have to have the Dow futures or the Dow, let's call it the futures for now. That's what we're looking at. Going to something like 30,400, 30,500 to even get close for this pink line, which is so wide, the distance from the 9 to the 14 is so wide, it's going to take a lot of effort and quite a bit of time, unless it's an incredibly powerful move right now. My thinking here is, <clears throat> I was very disappointed to see that the Dow futures were up this high, even though we are long, um, because... In a sense, it's kind of used up a tremendous amount of upside momentum to get rid of some of that selling pressure. But look at the bar itself. You've taken out one, two, three, four, five, six. You've gone into seven days ago, the candle of seven days ago, the Chapman Wave Roman candle, um, with this move up today. That's tremendous action. So you've taken out all the little 1% losses, and now all of a sudden it's a, it's a nice big gain. But that's the issue. The issue here is... Going to the E-mini, let's go to the E-mini right now. The E-mini is up uh, 55 at 37.46, hit the 14-period moving average, first time since that big sell, uh, sell back in September, uh, plunged it from the 200-period moving average, it went all the way down, and it's gone basically from almost 40, 41.90 down to the low that was made in the 3500s. So now this is very important because you've got the, let's go to the, the NASDAQ futures. Look at this, also hit the 14 period moving average. So all of these have become extremely on a, I don't even know if I can call it a near term, but a very short term uh, move to the upside has usurped a tremendous amount of the downside energy for the upside. Now we're at a little bit of an equilibrium focus as we are talking at 9, 12, 
9, 12 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Time, on this Tuesday. And we might have to do a little digest. I would love to have a digestion period that goes into about 12.45. And by 2 o'clock this afternoon, we start to head towards, not the day's high, but at least a, a pretty decent rally. That, to me, would be perfect. Hey, the market's not listening to me. <laughs> but in the meantime, back at the ranch, all we've got is uh, we've got um, to follow whatever is happening right now. This is, to me, most important. Look at the way gold, and I spoke about this the other day. I said... Gold, let me hit the right chart there. Um, gold was acting okay, not great, but if, considering what the dollar has done, gold has actually done pretty well. It was silver for a week now. I've been talking about how silver was doing so fantastically in terms of the chart pattern, way better than gold. And then yesterday was a stupendous move to the upside, taking out, um, taking out all the resistance. Uh, that goes into September, but then all of a sudden the August high, that was the August high of on the continuous contract of the 15th of August at 20.949, today has been taken out. We are at 21.075, we've hit 21.115. This I'm calling this a leg D in the Chapman wave. Let me just do this real quickly because some of you are new to my work. Uh, if I can get it, there it is. In the Chapman Wave, we try to identify the lowest low bar, merely count E successively higher peak, alphabetize sequentially in uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down, A to G, A, B, C, D. The fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. It can go higher. It can actually, there's a technique that I developed decades ago where there could be an instant restart within three bars where a new high is made. And then all of a sudden what you've got is You've got another buy mode that can go to another four higher peaks. It's a fantastic technique. Let me just do this for the moment. And uh, so let's get out of that and show you the next pattern. I'm only looking at three chart patterns. Straight line up, straight line down, one. Two is a cup formation. Three is an arch formation or a mix of one and two and one and three. One and three is where it's called the dreaded H. It looks like a lowercase H. If it takes out the left side low, it can go a lot lower. You can even see just here in the corner that I'm showing you. You see this is the gold, the silver. It made a dreaded H at a peak B. If it goes to an A or a B, the second highest peak, and then turns down and takes out the left side low, it can go a lot lower. And the, the Y, the reverse Y is when it takes out the left side high, it can go a lot higher. All right, so those are the techniques we'll talk about. In the meantime, we've got, um, so gold is doing very well, silver is doing very well. Um, this is going to be very interesting because the dollar, we've been along the dollar since 2018, uh, the dollar is trading uh, down, 0.68 at 110.99. It made a peak D. I'm almost about to put a down arrow. I won't yet. 114.78 was the multi-decade high. Look peak F in the uh, um, weekly chart. And only leg C in the monthly, meaning the dollar should still go higher. Uh, it had a high of 121 uh, a long time ago. And it's trading at 111. It did it at 114. Not very far from that upside potential target meantime it is pulling back and if you look at the euro eurusd look at this um nice move up leg b finally the euro is a little bit of respect it's trying to get to the 9 and 40 period moving average it's failed every single time at the 14 period moving average would it break it this time i'll be back master chapman sitting in for tommy o'brien a market kickoff i'll be back in a moment Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Uh, we're back, and I believe we got uh, Kevin Hinks from uh, Fast Market right on the line. Kevin, how are you? Good morning, Basil. Nice to talk to you. How's everything? Well, things are good, and I don't think this is a big surprise to you. You've been anticipating some kind of a bounce. So what do you think? Yes, I think you're going from, you know, this is day two. You, you can make a case that the dollar was extremely overbought. It's now coming down. Yields were overbought. They're now coming down. Bonds and notes on the uh, conversely were oversold. They're now rallying. You've got uh, comments from uh, Rebecca Greenspan from the UN talking about what interest rates are doing to developing countries. I think that's uh, those comments are making the dollar weaker this morning. But, yeah, I think the overall, you know, it, we're in a strange world right now, Basil, where uh, economic data is counterintuitive, right? You're looking for soft economic data, not strong economic data. Correct. So a little bit, a couple misses in some economic data yesterday on the downside gave the market more legs. I think uh, all things considered, though, you've got an OPEC meeting coming up tomorrow that's going to be significant. You've got five Fed speakers today. We're about to get some jolts data here at 10 o'clock Eastern, which is going to have a number north of 11 million again is the consensus. So there's a lot going on here, but certainly to start the day, day two of a pretty powerful rally. So, so Kevin, I, I think most people, the question they would ask you is, what do you think in terms of endurance? What do you think about the, the longevity of this? Is it just a little balance? Is it something... Uh, I know there are other factors that we have to look at, but just in terms of all the things that you, the stocks, everything that you look at, what do you think uh, could be an outcome, let's just say, going into a week from today? Yeah, well, I think 
you know, the S and P hitting 3,600 or got down to about 3,570 before it recovered. This market has come down a long way, Basil. So the question going in to third quarter earnings is: Have all the expectations come down far enough where we could get an upside surprise from third quarter earnings? That is, I think, the key to what this market is right now. Have stocks come down far enough to discount everything that the Fed's going to do? And then, frankly, this market needs the Fed to maybe be less hawkish than they have been. Jerome Powell has been as hawkish as I've ever heard him since he's become the Fed chair in the last few weeks, since Jackson Hole up until now. Uh, So I think it's, we're at a real interesting space, but corporate earnings versus the expectations for corporate earnings are going to be a big driver for what stocks do the next you know, month and a half or so. So the stocks that kick off the uh, earnings reports, are they the stocks that would be uh, leading stocks, uh, or, the, or is that more in the middle, uh, the ones that well, start the, off? The, it's early, I think first names that we always focus on are always the banks. They're always the first one to really yes. lead off earnings season in terms of any sector of the economy. But right after that comes the highest of high-profile names. So that third and fourth week in October are going to be pretty significant, I think, in terms of the high-profile names that come out. Just look on the calendar. It's a who's who of earnings coming out that week. I think with the FANG names, the NASDAQ names, that's when the rubber is going to meet the road with this economy because – they not only have to put out numbers, as you know, they got to put out a projection for the next three to six months. And I think that's where things get really interesting, Basil. What, what do you think about the XLF, uh, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, pulling back so sharply uh, when yields were actually climbing? So that the theory that very often when the yields are going up, it actually benefits the banks. We didn't see that this time. So the other things going on, right? Well, when looking at financials in general, the problem is everyone's knee-jerk reaction should be, well, yields are going higher, so the banks should be doing well. Yes, but an inverted yield curve hurts them. So one part is working for them. The other part, the, the yield curve is working against them. So, yeah, it's kind of a uh, it's right church, wrong pew in terms of financials. They're <laughs> like unable that. to spike higher because of the yield curve problems. So, and so you, what are you going to be looking at in Fast Money uh, this afternoon? Oh, we're going to trade. Uh, remember, we're in that chasm between the end of earnings season and the beginning of earnings season. So we like to do themes. And so today we're going to trade Target and Walmart in the first two segments. And then we're going to finish up with Expedia because the travel stocks have come back to life. So Expedia covers all those. It covers planes, hotels, rent cars everything. So uh, w- Target, Walmart, and Expedia today. Oh, that should be really interesting. Actually, that, oh, the information that you give should be terrific because uh, th- those are all in the sweet spot, of, well, the, the good spot or the bad spot of the economy. So there's a lot of information there. Exactly right. I mean, Walmart has been and Target have been pretty high profile in their struggles with inventories and getting the inventory right as uh, consumer spending pivoted. So we need updates on them. Are they getting through their inventory? How do they look coming out of the third quarter? And remember, Target talked about margins going to 2% so they could go back to 6% later. We'll see it. We'll, we'll check and see if, uh, for an update on that. Yeah, and they both took a, a really sharp dive uh, earlier on, and they've been trying to stabilize at the bottom of their range. So this should be very interesting. So uh, so for listeners, fast market, I call it fast money, but it's actually fast market. And uh, the, uh, what the, uh, the team looks at are options as well and different ways of looking at specific stocks with what the news is coming out and how you can deal with it in a very, uh, I, I think, succinct way. I love the way you use options and the, uh, it's, it's really very interesting and very educational. Thank you, Basil. You know, I think it's our job to give, like yesterday, when we looked at a stock, we talked about, uh, in terms of Rivian, 
you could buy the stock, right, for about three thousand or thirty one hundred dollars, or we gave a bullish option strategy that you could do for about a little over five hundred dollars. So and we're pre market. I should also just want to mention uses of capital, Basil. I just wanted to mention pre market it is up two thirty one at thirty four point twenty Rivian. Oh, that's very good. So um so folks, I, I encourage you to listen to uh, some, many of you do, but I encourage you if you haven't been listening to fast market this is a, a really excellent show and it's not it's i think it's over a period of time people get used to the vernacular they get used to the terms and they get used to it always sounds so, options oh my god but actually options can be a very very expedient way of utilizing less money for greater purpose exactly and the key is to educate yourself on how to trade risk defined using options and that's what we try to do every day and uh, uh, you know I, I love that aspect i just have one question uh, for you in yes. terms of uh, the fed itself is it do you see a dichotomy in actually what the fed is saying and what the market is telling us i believe that you're you're seeing pressure from the un on the fed to be a little less hawkish so far we heard from a lot of people haven't heard from Jerome Powell yet Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. Folks, listen in. It is at noon today, Eastern Time, Kevin Hanks and Fast Market. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Basil Chapman sitting here with Tommy O'Brien. This is Market Kickoff, 
And boy, what a kickoff. The Dow is up 363 after yesterday's spectacular 700-point move to the upside. We're looking at, let me just type that in. So the E-mini has just popped up to a peak C, but underneath the previous high, whoa, 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 whoa. yep, underneath the previous high in the, uh, you remember I was looking, I was showing you the chart, uh, the formations in the chart where you identify the lowest low bar and a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode should take you to at least a peak D. That's where other things can happen. Look at this peak D in the 120 minute. Uh, sorry, this is in the 10 minute chart of the uh, December E mini at 37.61.50. It pulled back sharply, and I drew in. These are patterns that repeat over and over and over again. Look at this: the long rectangle sideways pattern that's been going on since about 5 or 5:30 this morning. Just stuck in a range between 3:40, 37.40. And the 3765, uh, 3755-56 area, and we'll see if it's able to break out of that. And most importantly, uh, we're also looking at. Let me just show you. Here's the pattern. I spoke about the pattern called the H pattern, like a dreaded H. Well, we went to an arch formation, held very nicely, spiked above the 200 period moving average for a leg C. We'll see. Is it, can there be a D and then we start a pullback? Or is there going to be buying intensity out of all? Yesterday was the kind of move where there was very weak action going into the very early AM futures. Then all of a sudden it started to strengthen. And it strengthened in such a way that it wasn't giving anyone time. If you hadn't gone in on Friday it gives, or, or early uh, Monday morning, it gave you no time to get in. And then what happened is there was a pullback, and it was intraday, early morning, and it was just a brief pullback, pretty quick, pretty sharp, and then the market continued where buying pressure came in on every single pullback. Here we've got our leg D. Remember the Chapel Bay buy signal to buy mode? It says you should go to at least a D. <laughs> we've got a D right now. It's expanded Dow S&P futures up 67 at 37.58. And let me just see here. Let's go back to the 10-minute uh, chart. I always think of this as if it was a daily, weekly, monthly, but in fact, it's a 10-minute chart. And you've got that rectangle. Now there's a pattern that repeats, I, I couldn't tell you how many times, where it goes into a sideways move, a narrow rectangle formation, and it makes a cup formation. And that cup formation says how you deal with the left side high that was formed is going to be imperative to monitor. You can go above it, but you've got to close two out of three of the following bars or whatever time frame you're looking at to be able to substantiate to say, maybe now the technicals that had weakened are strong enough to start another move to the upside, or you can get a measurement that I call matching the left side, right side, the symmetry what happens at that particular top that was formed and what happens at this one and you can see the macd this is the macd right here uh, if it deflects lower it says uh oh that was just an opening uh, short covering bounce and now we're going to have a digestive phase but if it starts to rally further it says uh uh so many people missed out of the move uh yesterday and we're in total disbelief and didn't even cover shorts or was starting to cover shorts but still have tons of shorts i mean I'll show you in a moment uh, exactly what I mean, that the, the buying pressure can remain. So this is important. Look, the stochastics only is 53. I love it when it's in the 80% area. It's great when it's above 90%. It's only a 53. That, that does give you room to rally, but it also says, says this is where it could reverse down. And the on-balance volume is giving you that blue line, a very oversold, overbought, sorry, overbought reading. So I'm going to be watching this very closely. My suspicion is that sometime this morning we're going to get some kind of a di digestive phase, how deep the pullback is and how quick it is or how long it is are going to be absolutely imperative for the, the whole candle of this week to be formulating, and that's what we're going to be looking at. All right, let's get back to our story here. Uh, I wanted to cover these because now we're live, and now I can go, look, this is the UNG. Uh, some, uh, Mike in the den said he's long the UNG. I said UNG. I, I looked at the UNG. That's natural gas. Uh, United States Natural Gas Fund. I looked at it over the weekend. I looked at it yesterday. I was going to be one of my buys for subscribers to my opening. And then I thought, you know, it's under the 200 period moving average. That means it still has to test that 2360 uh, level. And if it's able to do that and then start to move to the upside, 
that'll be very important. So yes, it's running nicely. It's up 20 cents at 22.60. And um, basically what I'm looking at here is within the context of natural gas, let's put it together with uh, crude oil just because I want to go through those uh, soft commodities. Look at this. The, the crude is up $2.15 at 85.77. And this move has 200 period moving average of 86.62 as the resistance level. But this is a slightly different pattern to the natural gas. Now, it's so interesting because for months I've been saying, try to separate crudy, that's crude oil, or oily, from the dollar. Because some, it used to be when the dollar was rallying, crude oil would pull back. When the dollar was coming down, crude oil would rally. Uh, that... that um, parallel motion or opposite motion isn't in place anymore. It's just crude oil is in its own trajectory. It's just been every single week it's been pulling back under the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart and it's been straight. Now it's bounced to the nine period, the pink nine period moving average and that's a good sign in the shorter term. But the cup formation that was formed from the high of the week of November the 11th when it went to, I got 120.59, but that is a, a this is a this is a rolling contract. In other words, it is a continuous contract. So that price could change. I'll tell you what it is right now. So that is at 119.72. So it's slightly different. But that high, the week of the 11th of uh, March, had a sharp pullback. And then it started to make a cup formation. It went to just under that 120 level, um, and that was in June. And then it pulled back very sharply. It made like a pyramid Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down pattern. And it pulled back, and it went underneath support. That's the most important thing, the support of the 18th, the week of the 18th of March of 82.75. It closed under that a couple of times. Now it is at 85.79. It's trying to get back in. So that says this particular pattern says you could rally. You're probably not going to go much above the high that was made a week of the 2nd of September, 97.21, without bumping to a lot of resistance. So that's that's important. But crude oil is rallying. And the very short term, the fact that crude oil is rallying is kind of a good economic uh, sign because it says there is some, uh, some kind of uh, action in the crude oil rather than going to lower lows and lower highs, just continue with low lows and lower highs, meaning that the demand for oil is not there. This looks like there is the demand for oil. So the parallel of crude oil very often rallying when natural gas pull back might be changing. Also, you've got winter coming. So natural gas should be in play, but so far it's, it's really struggling. So as I say, natural gas itself needs to get above 7.04. The 200 period moving average is at 6.59, and then we'll see what happens. I do believe it's trying to turn here, but we'll have to watch it closely. Uh, another, a, a couple of questions that came in is, you had mentioned the IYT, which is the transports the other day. Yes, the transportation is, having, is, is trying to fill the gap from three weeks ago. It is up. 4.77 at 206.02. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tommy O'Brien. This is the market kickoff hour. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 489. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Is up 541 and the SP is up 79. Just fabulous, fabulous action. But unfortunately, it's not keeping anyone who wants to pull back to get in uh, to stocks that they want to maybe yesterday um, taking off. And you would expect some kind of a pullback. Days young, we'll see what happens. Meantime, back at the ranch, Amazon finally is having a decent day, <clears throat> but I think it's still looking very weak overall. Um, so, I, unfortunately, I don't do um, the kind of work that, that Tommy O'Brien does. When he discusses, it, you know, he'll talk about Amazon, he'll talk about it in a fundamental way, he'll talk about it in, in a way that tries to tie the technical picture together with the fundamental picture. I'm just looking at this purely anecdotally. I'd say that Amazon, <clears throat> I mean, when you, when you put an order in and it says it'll be there in, in three hours, which happened to me just recently. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, that means they have warehouses all around the country all ready to go with different things that they know are in demand. They're not going to have stuff that's not in demand just sitting there. But that is quite quite incredible. <clears throat> so um, in that sense, Amazon in many ways has changed everything about uh, shopping. <clears throat> just everything. Ever since it's come around, uh, um, Bezos put put money into um, basically changing the concept of what one had thought of with bricks and mortar, just turned it on its head completely. And uh, you don't have to step out of your house. You can just have everything come right to you. Not everything, but just about. It's just an incredible feat. But at the same time, there are consequences. And I think the costs of doing business now, I think for Amazon, that's I think that's what you're looking at from 188 back in July 2021 to the most recent lows um, at about 100. I mean, that's you know, that's what is about 80 percent. Oh, sorry, 80 percent. That is about a 40, 45 percent decline. That's that's a huge decline. Most importantly, what we're looking at here is that Amazon might be stalling. But if you look at the XRT, which is the retail index, this is the equal weighted. It has Amazon, but it doesn't distort like the RT, uh, RTH does. You can see that generally the selling pressure in all of the retail uh, sector itself, that has been persistent. And even in this arch formation or inverted V-shaped formation going to a leg G to the downside in the weekly chart says, yeah, you could rally. But you're probably not going back over 75 in this particular. At least this is what it looks like right now. That could change because we've had um, a lot of short covering. But I believe there's also new buying. I, for the last week or so, I've been looking at chart formations that said 
there are some stocks that seem to be having after a massive, some of them 80% uh, declines, some kind of buying based on the, my work on the unbalanced volume, etc. And that should suggest that it will help the uh, retail. And let's go to the RTH, which is uh, 20%, I believe, yeah, 20% is Amazon. I don't know if that's still the same. I've got this, this is historically, I've been looking at it. It doesn't have, sa the, it doesn't have the same decline as the XRT. So in other words, you can see Amazon has really helped uh, the overall RTH Van Eck retail ETF in a different way. Uh, but still, it's at the bottom of the range. Nice move up today, up to 19, up 2% at 161.50 and this one has a lot more resistance levels but let's just say we're looking at this in a week and a half and for whatever reason it's managed to go from 161 right now and it's managed to go between 165 and even the 200 period moving average of 169 if you're looking at it on a weekly chart it's still saying that weekly chart that it's still a weak w-e-a-k weekly chart if you look at the monthly chart, it says, hey, that's not bad. It's held very nicely when you consider everything that's gone on, that you've got an index that's gone from 200 down to about 150, uh, 145, and now it's bounced back to 161. It's not bad. So I'm trying to put this into, into some kind of perspective that says, um, within the context of this nine-month bear market, and it's a real bear market, and a real bear in some sectors. I mean, look at the SMHs. Uh, SMHs, semiconductors, nice move up today, up six dollars and twenty-five cents. They're one ninety-eight. Uh, still only just a gray leg A, and the MACDs just finally turned positive, barely. And stochastic still stuck at fifteen percent. And this is just saying we're not out of the woods yet, even in the semiconductors, even though this is a great move. Um, so I'm trying to put the picture together, and I'm trying to say it's very selective. And a question came in: Can I look at Bank of America? Well, Bank of America is part of the XLF. Fabulous move today, up a dollar twelve at thirty two twenty two, trying to fill the gap in from uh, September on that way down. Um, the weekly chart has made an arch formation, never took out the left side low, so that's a good sign. And but if you look at the monthly chart, it says you know, I, normally we'd be buying for the uh, subscribers of opening call every year. We, we've bought um, for maybe six or seven years, bought Bank of America and rode it up for a really nice gain. And as it started coming down, we'd take our profits and then we'd get out and then go back in again. We've gone in once, uh, just recently. It was a nice move up, but and then we got it taken out, I think for a little bit of a gain. And then I said, no, nah, let's just wait. I don't know if I'm ready yet for the XLF, even though normally if you're looking at the TLT, which is the bonds, down 35 cents at 103.48 today, the, the relentless... TNX, the relentless rallying in the 10-year all the way to this last high of 39.69, no, what was that? 39.92, 3.992 on the 27th of September has seen, it looks a little like the dollar, doesn't it? It's seen a pullback. And what I'd say to subscribers to my opening call for the last two weeks, within the context of this extremely oversold level, if we were to see yields start to pull back, if we were to see the dollar pull back and maybe gold and silver, I didn't think silver, although I spoke about it being looking so great and we bought a silver stock on Friday, it was up huge, almost 20% when we took a little bit off this, uh, this morning. Um, uh, if, if you saw the counterpoint of dollar down and gold up and you saw crude oil and I wasn't sure whether we needed to see it rally to say that maybe the economy is seeing some buying pressure because that's what you want to see in crude oil or whether that uh, continuous selling pressure is, is still excellent. We'll see whether or not the, the – oh, and the VIX. Oh, how can I forget the VIX? I especially wanted to spend time today on the VIX. And the VIX being repelled from the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone as we spoke about all of last week, then we could see not just a rally, we could see a rally that has some substance. Now, what's important about the rally, so we'll come back to the VIX in a moment, maybe when I do my show, we'll do a little bit more uh, on the volatility index. 
But the V-shaped pattern is so important. Let me just get that off there. Okay. okay. Uh, I and D U. Uh, what we're looking at here is the V-shaped turnaround. We've seen it before. You remember that 31,182 low that was made on the 6th of September, and there was this quick one, two, three, four session move to the upside, big green candles to 32,504, and then the dreaded H pattern as it broke the left side low and kept tumbling down. So when I get back, I'll talk about this leg A, oops, this leg A, that's unfolding right now. It's a gray leg A, and why is it gray, and what do we need to see to get a buy signal, and then a buy signal update to the market. I'll be back in a moment, Basil Chapman. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien for Market Kickoff. Of course, he does a tremendous amount of the fundamentals. I didn't do that, but he did a lot, a lot of looking at different charts and different aspects. I'll be back for my show, the, the Tiger Technicians Hours, at 10.06. Uh, but a question about Nike, uh, Nike uh, Inc. Uh, and it's had a nice gap up. And I said 85 is the key support. And I'm not sure it's going to fill the gap in this phase. It needs another two days of actual higher highs. That's really important. I got a question about IWM. The IWM, very nice move today. <clears throat> this is a, it's a, one of the few indexes that didn't take out its left side low of 162 back in the 16th, the week of the 16th of June. I'll talk about that when I get back because I want to see what's happened 10 o'clock to 10.30 this morning. That's going to be very important. It's, it's a, actually a big, important phase right now in this 
the move that saw a gap up, huge gap up this morning, a bit of a pullback, and then another spike to the upside. Look at this. The one-minute chart actually made a brand new tap in. Um, here we go. This is an instant restart. and made another peak D. We were talking about that earlier on, and it's, we'll see if it pulls back from here. So within that context, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, and um, <coughs> excuse me. I'll be back for the news, and then my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour. A couple of things that I want to look at. I'll also spend a little more time on the VIX index because that's where it might have a little bit of a bounce between 10 and 11 o'clock this morning. If it continues sliding like this, this inside track repellent zone that's worked for the whole year, we'll see what happens by Friday of this week on the weekly chart of the VIX index. It is down sharply, down dollar thirteen at 28.97. I won't be happy until I see it trading in the 27s for a couple of days. So with that said, we're just about to wrap up this particular segment. Uh, I'd love to take your questions. Uh, Tommy, I believe, believe we'll be back tomorrow. And as I said, I'm just filling in today, filling in for this hour. Cannot fill in on the fundamentals, but try our best on the technicals. And there are a couple of things we need to look at. And great, between 10 o'clock and 10.30, we'll get a lot of information. So with that said... Stay tuned. Great programming coming up all day. Of course, for my shows, you've got Steve, uh, Steve Rhodes. You've got uh, Think of Swim with uh, Kevin. And then you've got David Fizzamento. Uh, you've got uh, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, wrapping it up. I'll be back with Tom later today. Have a good day. Now it's up 637. I'll be back.